this is John Rinaldi from Real-Time Automation. Today I'd like to talk to you about TCP IP stacks. I've been getting a lot of questions from customers about what a TCP IP stack is, when, you know, where do I get one, how, can I, how do I uh, use it, uh, and why I can't transfer it from one piece of equipment to another piece of equipment. So let's get some background first. Um, what is Ethernet? Ethernet is you know, a wire. The devices move, move, move a message from one place to another. That's all it does. To do that, you need to have, in the, at the hardware level, we need to have a PHY. A PHY is a special chip that takes in the voltages, bits that are at the voltages of the computer, and puts out bits that are at the voltages of Ethernet. So this wire is, you know, a Cat5 wire, or, or you know, whatever, whatever it is. Um, some, some kind of, you know, it can be at various kinds of uh, electrical interface, electrical uh, yeah, electrical signals can be on there, but the phi knows how to transfer it to be that kind of electrical signal. Within that, you also have something called a MAC, which is it's actually some kind of interface, but I like to call it a MAC, and this thing controls when those bits go on the network, because Ethernet is synchronized. So this guy takes a packet and puts it on the, on the, on the, on the wire exactly at the right time. So it knows how to drive the phi, give it those signals, and control the timing. So it's very, very important. This is all, this is all hardware. Now, so what, what goes in, what do we give this, this, this interface in order to put on the wire? We give it an ethernet frame. An ethernet frame is, is a 48-bit message that has, that just has some control bits to say, I, this message is going from point A to point B. That's all it is. That's all ether. That's all this Ethernet packet is. Okay. So what's in this? What's in this Ethernet packet? Well, within the Ethernet packet, we have an IP packet. Now, this is within that. Do it like this. So there's a, there's some kind of there's some kind of header on this Ethernet packet. There's some kind of trailer. And the inside of it is this IP packet. The IP packet has two things it does. One, it does routing. It figures out that if I need to move a message from point A to point C, I'm going to move it from A to B first, and then B to C later. So it takes care of that. Um, so it, it does the routing. It also does fragmentation. Fragmentation is where it's got a, if the packet is too big to fit into the Ethernet packet, it's going to break it up in pieces and send the individual pieces. So there's two things. Now these, and this, at this level, what we're using here is the 48-bit MAC address in order to designate these destinations. So at the IP layer, the Ethernet packet layer, we're, put, we're, moving, de we're moving things to, this, uh, to those, that, that, that MAC address that's, that, that's in within every computer and that's very unique. Okay, so what's into the, in the IP packet? Now, now we've, once we, we, we graduated above this MAC layer, now we're talking about software. Now we're talking about the TCP IP stack. Um, so what's in within this? Within this, the TCP IP stack is this suite of protocols. So really the IP and all these other protocols that go into an IP packet are called the TCP IP stack. You have things like HTTP. HTTP is the, is the protocol that's used for web pages. That does, allows you to, to trigger a web page. You get the results get the web page out of the destination computer. Um, SNMP, we have things like FTP, and then a whole host of other ones, and two that are really important, TCP and UDP. And those are, those are the ones we're concerned with most about because those are the ones that our Ethernet IP, Modbus TCP, and Profinet a little bit are going to use. So that above, all the, above the TCP IP stack, We've got application. So that application is maybe going to have, it's going to generate, if it's that application's generating um, uh, a me messages, it's got to use the TCP stack in order to get that message on the network. But, all right, so we've got two important protocols here that are going to go into this IP packet. What's the difference between them? The TCP protocol is a protocol that is acknowledged. When you send a message, you get a message, you get a response back, so you know it got there. If 
you don't get the response, you know you can just keep going. UDP is an unacknowledged layer. The unacknowledged layer meaning that you just send it out and you don't know if it got there or not. So what do you have to do? Well, what, the reason that, why would you use that, you'd say? Well, you reason use that because if you're doing things like valves, where you're going to be turning the valves on and off really fast, you're sending messages continuously really fast. If you miss one, there's another one coming right after it, so there's no reason to wait for an acknowledgement because you've already sent 50 more before the acknowledgement would come back. So UDP is an unacknowledged transmission. That's used for I.O. messages in Ethernet IP. TCP is typically used for non-control messages, like I want to change the ramp speed on this drive. That's a very important message, and a message that you want to know gets there. So let's see how these were working, work for our different, our different kinds of industrial automation protocols. So if the, if the application is a Modbus stack, Modbus TCP, the application is going to generate Modbus TCP, then it's going to take the Modbus, that Modbus TCP is going to go into a TCP packet, and now Modbus TCP is nothing more than Modbus with the CRC dropped off the end. So we take that Modbus pack that generate the Modbus message that's generated by the Modbus TCP pack it stack. It goes into a TCP packet, that goes into an IP packet, that goes into an Ethernet packet, that goes through the interface, out the PHY, and onto the wire. So Modbus TCP is, 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 is a very simple protocol, and it only uses TCP. That's great. Now, what about Ethernet IP? So if you have an Ethernet IP stack under your application, that Ethernet IP is going to use both the TCP and UDP protocols. It's going to use the TCP protocol for sending the non-control messages, like I want to, I want to read uh, the identity object attribute one. That would go over, that would be a TCP message. But all the I.O. messages for Ethernet IP go through UDP. So continuously, it's going to, you know, Ethernet IP is cyclic, so there's going to be cyclic messages. This thing is going to just gener constantly generate a stream of messages which go through UDP, goes into an IP packet, an Ethernet packet, and goes out onto the wire. So UDP, it, Ethernet IP uses both TCP and UDP. Okay, now what about Profinet? Well, how does Profinet? Is Profinet the same thing? No, it's not. Profinet is completely different. If you, if, if, if you have Profinet in your system, all of this is bypassed. And application says, okay, Profinet, go and set, you know, connect and send this, send this data out. That thing's going to go all the way and right to the Ethernet packet. Bypasses all of this. That's how it, how it achieves the kind of speed that it does, is by bypassing all of this other stuff and just filling an Ethernet packet, shoving that Ethernet packet out. So Profinet has to be highly integrated into the system of the computer. And it's very, it's much more difficult to install than, than Modbus TCP and Ethernet IP is, where those can just sit on top of the stack and they work perfectly. Profinet has to give, get into the bowels of this TCP IP stack in order to access the Ethernet packets. We've done this for Linux, we've done it for some Windows systems, we've done it for MQX, and we've done it for a couple other things. And it's kind of on a case-by-case -case basis that we do that. So, you know, and then there's a, you know, there's other things like there's the ARP, ARP protocol that you find that's going to be, every, you know, you're going to find that that just, you know, converts the uh, IP addresses, TCP IP address into MAC ad, the 48-bit MAC addresses and things like that. So you've got ARP messages and all this, all of this comprises the TCP IP stack. So where do you get these? You can buy them off the shelf. You can get, usually come in within an operating system, and. Uh, uh, the, or you can actually get some free ones, but I'd be very wary of getting the free ones. So that's kind of my short introduction to TCP IP stacks and how they're used for all the industrial protocols. I hope that you enjoyed this and you'll listen to other videos that we have. Thank you very much.